Hey everybody, what's up? It's so good to be back in front of a camera like this. It's been, it's been a while since we've done this. Obviously, if you've been keeping up kind of with what I've been up to, you know why we're in a different location now. So much has happened in the past six months and I really haven't done a video since then. There's a lot to update you on, but I really wanted to make this video super personal and purposeful in a way because I'm hoping that some of you stumbled upon this video because you really liked the title of it, um, and then hopefully some of you are excited to kind of hear what's been going on with me. But in the past six months, I've graduated, started a job multiple times. I also gave a TED Talk. I've been working on my startup friendly a lot. We did a virtual music festival, and now I'm touring in the fall. It's insane how many things are happening and move to New York City. I wanted to kind of pause for a moment here and before things get crazy again I wanted to take some time to reflect on what moving to New York was like and hopefully give some really tangible positive takeaways um, for you. So if you're planning to move to New York or you're planning on moving anywhere and you're like me just a 20 something fresh out of college not really knowing what's going on with their life hopefully this will help you these are the five things that i wish i knew before moving to new york the first thing is what actually makes a good apartment i really thought when i first started looking at apartments i was going to find the one that i really loved you know with laundry and unit with a rooftop in the place that i wanted in budget and one thing that New York knows how to do really well is crush your dreams immediately, but in the best way possible. I think when I was searching before, I didn't really understand what I really wanted in an apartment because it was also overwhelming and it was so new and really just anywhere in the city was really exciting for me. Luckily, one of the first places that I ended up touring was in the East Village and I just automatically fell in love with the East Village of New York City. It's just the best area, the best food, the best people. There's not a lot of tourism here, so it feels very low key, but there's also so much to do and it's very young, so there's a lively energy, but there's still like families and dogs, so it still feels very community oriented. And I think it's just the best of every single world. So location is one that I learned that I really care about a lot more than I thought. Um, I also was really concerned with figuring out commute to my job, but I ended up quitting my nine to five shortly after moving to New York, so that didn't become a problem. But you know, we considered other neighborhoods, cheaper areas, and I think for me, I've kind of settled on the fact that I would rather pay more to live in an area that I love because that's where I'm gonna be. And especially now, while we're still in this pandemic, there's not as much travel that you can do. It's just more so very, very local um, travel and exploration and such. So like, I love the East Village and we ended up giving a little bit, no laundry in the unit, but we do have laundry in the building, which fortunately my roommate was very adamant about. At one point, I didn't really care if we had laundry in the building, I would go to a laundromat. I had to do that once because the laundry machines were broken and I'm really glad we never have to do that again. It takes up your whole Sunday. So I think before you move, really kind of figure out what are your actual sort of things. And I feel like there's a very much a difference between a wish list and a practical list. Like my roommate and I each had one or two things that were like, this needs to be in this apartment. And then there's you know, those couple of things that we can live without just to help with the search. For me, like my needs were a living room because I'm somebody that likes to kind of move between spaces and you know work and sleep here and then watch TV and relax and have inter company and entertain out in the living room. And then the other piece was air conditioning because I don't know how you can do a summer in New York City without air conditioning. It's impossible. So think about your list. Um, I mean you can read as many articles and blogs and watch as many videos as possible but really only you are going to know what defines a good apartment for you. So I'd have those one or two things and then be ready to kind of give up the rest of it and then you'll probably find a place that you love sooner. The second is the cost of moving. I think I did a really good job of budgeting for how much moving was gonna be, but also having a little bit of extra. I knew there was gonna be a need for a little bit of buffer money there, which I'm really glad I did because installing the AC units were much more expensive than I thought they were gonna be. We ended up getting a incredibly good deal on our rent. Um, so I'm stoked about that. And truthfully, I think that's why I was able to afford moving to the East Village, at least for now, I hope I don't get kicked out next year. I think it's really important to budget those things through and talk to somebody you know that's done it recently because I mean the U-Haul, the boxes, the setting up a new Wi-Fi router, all of those sort of little things seem so feasible but then when you add them all together it becomes so expensive so definitely spend some time budgeting because one of the toughest things was moving here and I really wanted all new furniture because I wanted to feel like I was moving beyond college. I didn't want any of furniture from my college apartment. Um, I wanted this to feel like an adult space and part of that meant, you know, getting new furniture and um, 
really new things that made me feel like I was taking care of an apartment in a different way. But of course that all adds up and I ordered that so it'd be all delivered on the same day because I just really wanted my apartment to be put together. And that ended up being a lot of money. I think if I did it again, I would have spread out these purchases a little bit longer just to be a little bit more financially smart. Um, but of course everybody's budget and financial situation is different so I would just really check in with yourself on that. The third thing is what the city changes you really means. I realize that so much we say, you know, New York City drains you and takes such a toll on you and that's true um, and really crushes your dreams and everything. Um, but what I've really learned is that I think this more so idea of New York City like being such a challenge more so comes from like our inability to adapt what our lifestyle is to what the city is rather than feeling like we need to adapt our lifestyle to what the city's lifestyle is. Those two things sound probably really similar and I actually may have said the same thing. What I mean is like, you know, I'm, I'm an extroverted person, but I also love when I work to be very introverted and work very independently. But I found, you know, there's been weekends where it's like, I don't have any plans. I was like, I would just love to sit on the couch and watch a movie tonight. But like that didn't feel like an option because you're like, I'm in New York. Like I should be going out. There's a million things going on all around me tonight. Like why am I not a part of that? And I think that sort of mental battle that you start to take with yourself really takes a toll on you then. And that's more so of like me projecting a lifestyle I don't live in a way that I feel like I need to. And I think that's where people drain yourself. And so I've kind of learned quickly to go, well, this is the way that I work. You know, when I'm really in the mood to have a night out, like that's when I feel like I can really enjoy New York City. But I've also learned there's nothing wrong with like staying home because that's what we all like need to do. And there's such like a grind and hustle culture here that is um, inspiring and truthfully you can feel an energy and that's really why I wanted to move here. But at the same time, you have to make sure you're respecting yourself always and understanding that like that is not feasible for everybody. And it's only because there's so many people here that it always feels like that's happening, but people aren't projecting their nights in with a face mask on watching Netflix reruns. That's just not, um, what's being projected. And I'm still figuring that out and I think I'll have a lot more thoughts on that, but I really wanted to include that point in there because I think it's, um, it's a misconception I think scares a lot of people away, but it's really just something that you can really tackle independently. Fourth is budgeting. Now this one seems very obvious and I mean, it doesn't matter where you're moving, but it's no secret that New York has a higher cost of living than like most places, if not like everywhere. The lifestyle that I lived in college where it's like, okay, you know, like, you can go out to a bar, you can grab like multiple drinks, or you can do whatever. Like everything is more expensive here and you learn to build up a bill a lot faster. Your rent's more expensive, utilities are more expensive. And so I think I really wish, and I think what I've learned so much is people are so respectful of, of money here. And I think it's just at the age of 22, you know, you're not making enough to live the lavish lifestyle that you may dream of. So I think it just comes down to making sure that you know what you're doing. And I've done a much better job of that recently, in all honesty. I think when I first came here, it was, I mean, it was like a hurrah, it was a celebration. I was graduation and I was celebrating moving and there were so many things happening. And I was celebrating, you know, a music festival and a TED talk. And there were so many things like that, that I went through probably the most money I've ever gone through in my whole life. And now I've kind of been able to take a step back and go, okay, well, I've always been someone that really wants to save for retirement retirement really early and I I really want to think about like investing and those sort of things and so that's why I've gone into budgeting a little bit more um, but also just my second point of budgeting is it's so much fun to have your friends involved in that. My friends and I have been talking a lot lately about how strange it is that our generation thinks there's such a taboo with talking about money but it's actually I mean if you really trust the people that you're around to um, be transparent and open with you in these discussions I really encourage it because I mean, we ask ourselves like, okay, what does the average 22 year old have in their savings account? And like, we don't know, there's so many unknown things and that, you know, we're getting so much advice from everything, you know, now whether it be your parents or literally finance TikTok or whatever, I think it's a really good place to center yourself. Five is the consequences of saying yes. And I mean consequences for good and bad reasons too. There have been small moments just living here so far where I'm like terrified. If I wasn't in that place at that time, the door that now defines my entire life would be closed, which is so interesting and so intriguing that it almost makes you scared about how many little small opportunities have I just just shyly missed 
that would have changed my life completely and I mean that's like a mental spiral that I can't handle. There's such a beautiful like aspect I think of really just any postgraduate experience but I feel like really New York's known for putting yourself out there and there's been moments so far where it's like I have not wanted to do things but I really want to challenge myself in that way but also you know pushing yourself too far and then you know feeling like you need to take a day and regret it's really all about centering yourself in some way and realizing that like okay you want to push yourself really hard but you have to know how far and there's such this idea around New York is of just you know never sleep 24 7 go all out make the most of time but what's really strange now is so much of my life was structured by time and you know like you know you'd be in school for this amount of time of the year and then you go move on to X school and then you go to college and then but now I'm not working on any sort of timing system and so I have to remind myself like okay it's okay to just run some errands on a Sunday and not you know work on something creative or further a career in any sort of way but I mean there's been moments here that I like I really can't imagine like if I had missed out on in a really sort of sentimental way. And so I think that's why I think it's important to understand the value of yes, just to really open doors for yourself, but also to make sure that you're really taking care of yourself too. These are all ideas that I'm really just kind of exploring now, and I really hope I'll be able to share so much as I continue my life here. I really want to thank you so much for watching this video and being patient with me. So much has happened in the past six months. I want to make sure that I was delivering my full self and really great content to you again, and so that's what I'm up to. So much is going on. Make sure you check out everything in the description. I can't even, off the top of my head, there's so many things going on. I know I'm going on tour this fall, um, so if you're in New York or Boston, make sure you check that out. And I'm really excited just to kind of get back out there and create and really share so much of my life again because I have a feeling um, these next few years are gonna be really great here. I'm also really excited to hear if you have any tips for me. I mean, it's not even gonna be a year before I'm probably back in the New York apartment hunt, so I'm eager to hear anything that you've learned too. Thanks so much, everybody. I will talk to you soon. Stay well, get vaccinated, um, and we'll be in touch.